today I'll be talking about the software called Vampire. Uh, it's visually edited morphophenotyping image recognition, which is based on unsupervised machine learning technique for detecting cellular morphology. So the aim of the paper is to quantify cell and nuclear morphology, but why quantify? It's because cellular morphology has information about several biological processes, and it is used by several researchers and clinicians in study, diagnosis, prognosis, and treatment of human diseases. And the result of this paper is nothing but this vampire software. And so what does morphology actually mean? the study of the structure and the relationships uh, of the structures of object. Uh, physical features like, sorry, physical features like a size, shape, color, etc., all can uh, come under morphology. So morphology can be used for phenotype analysis, like differences between conditions. Uh, give me a second, I'm so sorry. No worries, Manny. So, Morphology can be used for phenotype analysis, like differences between conditions where cells have different shapes, which you can see here. Might not be a very good example, but yeah. Uh, it can also be used for uh, developmental analysis where cells have different morphology, like at individual uh, developmental stage. Uh, it can also be used for cell type classification, like you see differences of different shapes. Uh, or it, can, uh, or it can be used as an added information to the data we already have, like the Visium gene expression data. So next thing is, what's the need for this new software? Uh, it's because the cell morphology is being quantified based on geometric measures like area, perimeter, and shape factors like aspect ratio, eccentricity, etc., which which can all be quickly and easily calculated uh, uh, from softwares like a cell profiler, image, J, MATLAB, et cetera. But these measures don't fully capture the shape information. Uh, these uh, shape descriptors, uh, like the aspect ratio, it's the ratio of uh, the major axis uh, length to the minor axis length. The eccentricity, it's the ratio of the distance between the foci to the major axis length. All, all of these measures, uh, uh, measure the deviation of the shape of the cell from that of a circle. It don't actually quantify the shape of the circle. It just like see how different it is from a circle or a straight line. So defining and quantifying cellular shapes is much more quant complicated. And that's where the need for this new software comes from. Um, and to explain the straight, uh, uh, explain the same thing, like, uh, uh, they have used fluorescently labeled uh, mouse embryonic fibroblasts uh, and uh, calculated these different geometrics that we are, that I mentioned uh, in the earlier slide, like aspect ratio, shape factor, etc. And this is a scatter plot uh, showing the distribution of around 40,000 uh, mouse cells uh, confined in a 3D axis of aspect ratio, shape factor, and solidity. They observed that by taking a subset of cells that have uh, highly similar uh, values of all these geometrics, uh, still show very high, uh, like high heterogeneity in the shape, uh, cell shapes. So this example shows that conventional cell morphology parameters may be insufficient to capture the cellular differences. So how does this software work? Uh, the major computational steps in the software are first, uh, equally spaced coordinate uh, coordinates along the contours of the cell are extracted. Then these uh, extracted like shapes from the coordinates are uh, normalized. Uh, the normal uh, the normalization of the shape uh, is to get rid of the drifts from uh, like. Uh, uh, that, uh, that we get from uh, size variations and uh, mirror effects or rotational variations, like a same cell that when rotated uh, can look different in shape, like different in the structure. Right? All those are uh, normalized and we get the final normalized uh, shape here. Uh, 
Then the coordinates of these normalized uh, shapes are used as high dimensional features. And then uh, principal com component analysis PCA is applied to those coordinates uh, to determine the eigen shape vectors. The eigen shape vectors that we get from PCA accounts for the 95% per, uh, of the total variance uh, uh, in these uh, high dimensional features. Then those eigenvectors are used to those uh, resulting eigenvectors from PCR are used to reconstruct it, reconstruct the shape. Uh, so if you see here, like these might be different cells, and uh, like you you extract the eigenvectors from all those different shell cells. And they might be like showing up a very similar pattern of these shape modes. These shape modes are then extracted by using the k-means clustering technique. So the k-means clustering is by default repeated five times with different uh, centroid seats, like here. Uh, to find the uh, uh, to find the initial seat that results in the lowest initial value, the init initial uh, is the measure of uh, distancing uh, distances of all the data points to the centroid of that cluster. So the minimum uh, the initial is like the lower initial, the better clustering it is. So as the number of cluster increases, the initial value uh, decreases, as shown in this figure. So this initial value is calculated on uh, 10 separate runs of this vampire. Uh, so the graph shown here is, uh, is built on uh, 17,000 mouse embryonic cells that were discussed previously. And uh, 10 runs on these 17,000 cells, uh, 10 runs of K-means cluster on these 17,000 cells were performed and they chose an initial value of 10, like as you can see, like it stops decaying after this. Like the rate of decay is like very little as, after this point on the elbow. To demonstrate how well the software works, the paper uh, shows the following control experiment. Here, the image shows uh, embryo, like the mouse embryonic fibroblasts, uh, with, which are treated with uh, stained with phalloidin on left. Uh, these are wild type, and uh, the right cells are like uh, lamin knock, knocked out, like uh, the phenotype. So. Cell, cell segmentation from these cells are obtained and the coordinates from these cell segmentations are then used and all uh, uh, PCA and K-means are then applied to all, uh, all, all those coordinates. And these uh, histograms are shown like, after the K-means, like you, you extract these shape modes out of all these cells, like these are the shape modes, these and these are the same uh, that you extract. And you can see the distribution of all these cells, like how it is different between wild type and the knockouts. So another example is examining cells uh, of predefined shapes uh, to validate vampire. So here they used adhesive micropatterning uh, techniques where users uh, can evaluate morphologies of cells confined to predefined as adhesive shapes. So cells are plated on these uh, uh, predefined adhesive uh, uh, like surfaces where the shape of the cells like represent uh, those uh, surfaces that are like pre-coated, I guess. So, so these are the uh, fluorescence microscopy images of of those cells and these are the segmentations. Uh, these are like the wild type and the knockout ones and the segmentations of the same. Uh, okay, and these uh, these are like the uh, shape uh, treated, uh, uh, 
these cells are on the shape treated surfaces and these are controls like uh, the surfaces are normal like compared to these. Okay, and these cells are color coded based on the shape modes that are extracted at the end. And these tables here show the frequency of cell distributions like uh, in uh, with the cell shapes and the nuclear shapes. And these are the uh, traditional geometric parameters uh, that are calculated for the same cells. As you can see, like this analysis shows the predominance of this shape mode in all these cells and the traditional parameters don't show any difference. Hey Mary, uh, can I ask yeah. a question? Yeah. Like in, the, in image A, when you said the surface, so you said something about the surface. What is the difference actually? So, uh, I think like cells can be plated in these pre-treated surfaces where like uh, these ex those cells then exhibit these uh, shapes that are th that uh, surfaces are actually treated with like untreated cells show their normal morphology. Probably like what they did like cells don't like to just you know adhere to glass or plastic on their own so you usually mm -hmm. put something down on the glass or plastic for the cell mm -hmm. to like adhere to and so it looks like what they did here was to put down whatever it is that they're putting laminate or something in mm -hmm. like a triangle morphology or in circle morphology so that the cells will adhere in these like weird shapes that they can tell you circle sh or triangle like that's what it sounds like. Yeah. Thank you. Then they show another example here where uh, the nuclei uh, the nuclei in the epidermis and the reticular dermal, dermis regions of the skin tissue are shown. And you can see like, these are the final shape modes that they extracted from these data. And you can see how different uh, the cells, uh, the morphology of the cells between these two layers look like. So this is the overall, overall workflow of the vampire software. Uh, it's available as the GUI uh, that's built in Python. It works only on Windows. It, the source code is also available in MATLAB, but I couldn't find it on GitHub. And you need segmentations for the uh, cells and the coordinates of those uh, contours of those segmentations. And these need to be analyzed by the user before running them on Vampire, just so that you see like you're selecting a good data set, like good training data set for Vampire so that it extracts like the shape modes that you uh, that you feel those data should exhibit. And they tested this, uh, uh, like after this, they tested this application on uh, several other data sets. So initially the software was developed to uh, interpret morphological data for fluorescently labeled uh, pancreatic cells to identify a potential morphological signature of metastasis. And Vampire analysis showed that metastas, uh, metastasized cells present significantly lower heterogeneity than the primary tumor cells. And they didn't show any graph for this. They just mentioned it there. So uh, Mary presented like this paper from the Dennis Ritz and uh, Pai um, Isun uh, Wu lab. I don't know if I pronounced the names correctly. Sorry, uh, but this is like a major protocols paper from 2021. Well, 